I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. We, I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you watching. And today I'm really happy to introduce to you Francis Groneman. Appreciate you coming and sharing your story. Uh, thanks for being here. Thank you for letting <laughs> me come. We uh, have a lot to talk about and some interesting, inf interesting things in your life that have occurred. And uh, you were actually born in the in Provo. Born Is that in right? the Covenant. Born in the Covenant. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Your parents were... My uh, parents went to the temple. So. Uh, I was the third of four children, and they never went back were after they, they after their marriage. Were they upset at the temple? And No, they just didn't want to go. Oh. My grandmother insisted, oh. and so that's why Do they were Do you think that happens married. very often? Um, <laughs> Where people are expected the, to go yeah, to the maybe, temple? Yeah, maybe... Um, Kind of like they're expected to go on missions now. Yeah, it's just. Born. And uh, so, were you active then as a young? Always lady? active. Were you? Yeah. Primary and. I was the good little girl in our family. The, my siblings all just got inactive quite early, and. Oh, did they? I stayed active, and. You went to seminary. Went to seminary all four, all four years. Yeah. Had a wonderful Old Testament teacher. Oh yeah. One of my heroes. Yeah, he was really an excellent teacher and I did learn a lot about the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. well, that's, I know they cover that every four years or so, at least you cover each of the standard works and mm -hmm. so on. So what happens um, in your life? You, you, I guess, graduate from high school and you start going to BYU, right? I went to BYU for a couple of years, yeah. then moved to Los Angeles mm -hmm. and lived down there for a few years, then moved around a lot and then moved back to Los Angeles, got married, had a child, got <laughs> divorced, really ugly divorce and um, ugly marriage. <laughs> oh. And uh, then I came back to BYU to finish. Oh, and yeah. My daughter was three at the time. Okay. And you ended up graduating from BYU yes. in, in yes, education, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. and then taught then you, first grade. And how long did you teach? I you taught, taught for? Um, first grade for five years, and I taught kindergarten for a year and a half. Oh. And then I substituted a lot after that. After that. While you were at BYU, did anything ever come up? Did you, I mean, I know you read the Book of Mormon many times. You told me that. Yes. Uh, uh, anything come up um, that ever made you question I your didn't, testimony? Uh, I always doubted. I always had doubts. And the thing About that, the... About the, the about the, the Book of Mormon and about Joseph Smith. Really? I never doubted God. I never doubted Jesus Christ. And the Jesus Christ that I knew then is the one I know now. And I was, it was always frustrating to me that people would say, he's my brother, he's my this, he's my that. No, he's that. my king. Really? Even as a young person, yeah. you thought that? Yeah. Well, can you verbalize what you mean when you say you didn't uh, understand Joseph Smith as a prophet? I, mean, I just didn't. It just didn't ring true. I just never believed it. My dad the vision, used to say, you mean, or just the first vision, or him being a prophet. Yeah, I or? didn't. I didn't. I just didn't believe it was true. And um, but you remained active and went to BYU. You took religion classes there, and 
Well, it was where all my friends were, and yeah, and I loved the activity in the church, the music, and the drama, and yeah, all the things. The road shows, did you road ever do? Shows, <laughs> road shows, a lot of road shows, yeah. Yeah, it's just our your way of life, really. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, your family, it was. and and uh, I got a lot of things from the church that I didn't get in school because I was very shy in school. Mm. So I really loved all the things that I did, but. Yeah. When it came time to talk about the Book of Mormon, or when we would be reading the Book of Mormon, I just always had this feeling like, <laughs> can't we just get through this? No, just... Now, did you feel the same way at, the, at that point about the Bible? Oh, no. Did you? Oh, really? No. Uh, we read the Bible at home. Oh, did you? Yeah. You know, not, not frequently, but um, my mother had a Bible on her nightstand, and... Um, I asked her once if she had a Book of Mormon, and I said, why don't you read the Book of Mormon? She said, oh, I read it once. <laughs> and that was enough. <laughs> that was enough. <laughs> but these were good people, your parents, They right? were good people. They had servants' hearts. They taught us to love and to give and to share and to be responsible and honest yeah. and to think. That's important, isn't yeah. it? And, and you've used that a lot as you've gone through life, I know. Yes, so, I have. Yeah. I have. I've, so, so after you graduate from BYU, I have then to did say you, this, yeah. Earl. Earl. <laughs> yeah. One of the reasons it kept me active is because that was the best way I could rebel against my dad. Oh, why? He was... didn't. He didn't want us to go to church after a certain point. By the time I was a teenager, he was completely inactive, oh. and he was criticized me for going to church so much. And I, that was a legitimate way to yeah. rebel. He just didn't. Uh, he, he didn't want to participated in the church at no, all? No, he didn't. Well, uh, later, it, you know, when I became... Yeah. When I was younger, he was active, but when yeah. I became a teenager, he gradually... So this was your way of rebelling. Yeah. <laughs> we all have our different ways, don't we, <laughs> <laughs> of our parents. So after BYU, then you start teaching, and, and then what uh, happens? Well, I taught for five years and then moved to Europe for supposedly to teach, but I didn't have a contract and didn't get the job. So we were over there just under a year and then came back and was in a bad car wreck, which disabled me and I never mm. have taught since. Oh, mm. And, you know, I just substituted and things like that. But yeah. um, the accident was a real turning point in my life and I've asked God so many times why why you know all things are supposed to work for good and you're still but, waiting. you know it's amazing now that I'm old and I'm seeing how these things fell into place in my life God had a plan mm. and I've, I've I can see it now and 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 people were just dropped into my life at different points in my life when I needed them yeah so can it's, you give us a couple of examples I mean I know well, you mentioned I didn't uh, my daughter was moving out of my life, and there was a young woman, a young couple that lived across the street from us in Provo. They were BYU students. And I had gotten attached to a lot of BYU students, and they moved away and broke my heart, so I said, I'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> but this young couple would not leave me alone. <laughs> they came over. They invited me over. They brought me things. They asked me to babysit, and they just, it just gradually they moved into my life as my daughter was moving out. Mm -hmm. And they have four little girls. My daughter has three girls, mm -hmm. but the girls, you know, they're in <laughs> Idaho now. Yeah. They are my grandchildren, yeah. truly, yeah. as much my grandchildren as the ones here in Salt Lake. Well, you were a wonderful example to them, I'm sure. And well, I try to be, and yeah. I, they're all Mormons, and I try to sneak a little <laughs> bit of info in here once in a while. Well, it's interesting you say you've... Uh, had this relationship with God and Jesus this whole time. You never really believed that he was your brother. No. Oh. I just, I had an older brother and he was mean. He oh, died so. when I was eight. But all we remember about him is that he was mean. And, yeah. and so I didn't want Jesus to be my older brother. <laughs> you wanted him to be. Th and he, I, he was somebody that I just felt we should always have on a pedestal, always be worshiping. You know, not trying to be common with yeah. him. and I didn't appreciate that perspective when I was yeah, a Mormon. I always just, thought of him as just coming along first. He was the older brother, uh, first born in the pre-existence, and he just accepted the calling. And 
he was working his way to godhood and yeah yeah i just i never appreciated that until i really started studying the bible and really yeah. realizing who jesus yeah. really and is. i never really appreciated the book of mormon i always call it second rate mythology <laughs> Well, it has an interesting history, doesn't it? It though? does. As we it find, as we, as I've learned more and more <laughs> about that. But you did have an interesting experience when you gave a, a testimony at a fast and testimony meeting. When I was, uh, it, I had made up my mind. It was the last time I was going to go to church. I didn't even realize that it was fast Sunday because it was the first of the month. Mm. I just showed up, and what I usually would do is show up, take the sacrament, and leave. Mm. And um, all of a sudden. You know, I realized it was sacrament meeting or a fast and testimony meeting, and I thought, I'm going to leave. And I got up and found myself walking down toward the front and got up. <laughs> Turned the wrong way, huh? <laughs> bore my testimony, and I said, I knew God lived. I knew Jesus Christ was our only way to go back to God, and that I knew that He was our Savior. And then I thanked the people for sharing their children with me. and left and walked out and that was the end oh. and never went back. You had always been active in primary and music and mm -hmm. Relief Society music and everything I guess, huh? Yeah, music was a big thing that kept me there. Yeah. In fact, I wrote a series of songs, children's songs on the Book of Mormon, on Book of Mormon stories. And really? I had children's choirs in several different wards and we, oh. we used to sing those songs that I say, what was I thinking? <laughs> Did the bishop or anyone ever come to your home and talk yeah. to you yes, about came, what was going a, on? A dear, dear man. I just love him dearly and his whole family. And he came to my home and we talked and he said, well, you know, you're going to lose your eternal salvation. I said, no one can take my eternal salvation except Jesus Christ himself. And he said, you're right. He did. <laughs> what did he, that, and, what and do you think still he meant by, friends. what do you think he meant by that? Do you think well, I think what it, what it boils all down to is that it's Christ and Christ alone yeah. that we're saved by. Yeah, and our faith in Him. And nothing His that we do and nothing that anyone else does to or for us yeah. can change that. Well, where did you get this perspective? I mean, you didn't get this from going to sacrament meeting and Mormonism. I'm not sure if it came from one of my grandparents or what, but I knew even as a little child that I belonged to Jesus. My goodness. Well, I know that you said you, you um, listened to some TV programs and some radio programs and things that kind of, I guess, taught you maybe this Christian perspective I always did, yeah. yeah. When I was what, in what kind of programs were well, there? when I was in remember? junior high on Sunday, I used to go out and sit in my dad's car and listen to religious broadcasting. Really? <laughs> well, you're an unusual child, weren't you? <laughs> I just, I always knew there was something more. I had a, a friend. In fact, whenever anybody would move into our neighborhood or the school that was not a Mormon, I'd be right there wanting to be their friend. Mm. And I had a friend that was Catholic, and I used to go to catechism with her once in a while, and then yeah. I'd ask her to go to primary, and of course she wouldn't. But I just was always looking for something. When we lived in L.A., we visited, well, even in Provo, when I had my daughter, I used to take her to visit all the different churches and try to point out differences in yeah. the way they believe. But now, now, you were a single mother. I was. And you mentioned that many that years. kind of caused a a bit of a problem at, was it at BYU or yes. just in your ward? Yes. No, when I came back from BYU, the ward wasn't a problem, but it was just, I would meet people in classes and we'd talk, you know, how you tell a little about yourself. And I would say, well, I'm divorced and I have a little girl. And immediately I'd feel the, like a door shutting. And I was just really, being judged. I by... really, truly knew then what, um, what's the word I want? <laughs> I knew I'd do this. Um, well, what it was to be judged and what it was to be yeah. ostracized. At, ostracized, or, yeah, yeah. Something. And I, I just responded to it by trying to do more and, you know, be mm -hmm. more, get better grades, go to the church, go to the temple. Yeah, you did go to the temple, right, up here in Salt Lake? I and, did. I yeah. went quite quite frequently, and I always came out feeling like something was wrong with me. 
because it didn't it didn't inspire me. Well, I was going to ask you as many times. I know you read the Book of Mormon a number of times. You said you didn't get a testimony, and you felt like it was your fault. Yes, I always did. Yeah, and you felt that same way about the I temple. I always wondered if there wasn't something I was doing wrong. In in spite of the fact that I didn't truly believe it and didn't want to believe it, I guess. <laughs> Maybe that was it. But I always felt like there was something wrong with me. And did the temple just, was it, you, know, you went back several times, it mm -hmm. sounds like. Uh, that First was time I went, it was just fun. My two best friends took me. They yeah. were both married, and... And we went out to dinner afterwards. We went to the Salt Lake Temple, and to me, that was always the temple. And yeah. so, that was it. Was just fun, and I didn't even think about what we, what I'd learned. And then, yeah. as I went back oftener, and um, did you know the, about masonry in the temple at that point? That I didn't know. I of, kept hearing about masonry, yeah, but, but did. I didn't know much about it. And but, I always felt like the temple really lacked any detail about Jesus. It's Really, I mean, he is kind of an errand. Very sterile, actually. He, he's an errand person, right. in some regard, in that's the temple. A good, yeah, that's good. But it isn't. It isn't about Jesus at all, no, is it? No, it isn't. Yeah. In fact, it's like the doctrine of the church is here. The doctrine of the Book of Mormon is here. I mean, it seems like nothing meshes. Yeah. There's nothing said in the Book of Mormon about. Um, Missionary work or what else? What is? Oh, three degrees of glory. The three degrees. Uh, and, marriage and for so, time so and all eternity. It's... Nothing's in the Book of no, Mormon. Nothing no, nothing is. And you don't hear, when you read and study the Book of Mormon, you don't, you don't learn anything about Christ. No. Well, it, except Christ in third is, Nephi. Yeah. Well, Christ <laughs> is there, but Mormonism isn't in the Book of Mormon. No, that's it for isn't. Sure. Yeah. So you've had a, 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 I mean, did you? eventually just kind of decide, okay, I, I just can't, well, despite the culture and the music and everything, well, I just can't. Well, starting from the time I was a teenager, I used to take furloughs, you know. When I was a teenager, I'd miss a couple of weeks, and then it would get, when I was a single adult, it got, I <laughs> went inactive for two or three years at a time, and then I'd go back, and then I'd, you Give know, try again. take my... Just didn't seem fulfilling, it just or couldn't, it just didn't take. Yeah. So what's actually happened in your life now that makes a... Uh, gives you a different perspective. Um, I just gave up trying to control everything myself. Yeah. I had been in a car wreck and had pinched nerves in my back and I was in just horrible pain and I just finally just went on my face before God and said, I can't do it. Mm. I just can't do it. And it just you know, it felt like a fresh gust of air just blew into really? me and I just had that feeling ever since, just, I can't stop smiling, and I can't stop, you now, know, go up you to know. strangers and hug them. And now you know who this Jesus really is, yeah. I guess. Yeah. And now I know that I do belong to him. Yeah. And I, I don't think, and everyone that's come through an interview that I've interviewed has felt this same thing about experiencing a different Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. It just... Uh, just isn't the Jesus of Mormonism. No. So I know they call themselves Christian, but it's uh, it's a different Jesus. Grace and works. Have you dealt with that? I guess. And were you? Did you feel like you were working your way and trying to my, prove yourself? My my favorite song was Amazing Grace from as long ago as I can remember. It. Really. And I used to, when I was at uh, one point I was um, board music chairman, yeah. and I would get people to sing. Numbers. Amazing Grace, and I had somebody. I had asked somebody to sing Amazing Grace, <laughs> and then I used to write it out and handed it, you know, to the bishopric and everything. And he came back and he said, "You cannot sing that." I said, "Amazing Grace." He said, "It's not in the hymn book." Yeah, that's right. You have to be in the hymn book. Yeah, I noticed you're wearing a cross. Is that uh, taken on a different perspective and, than as a Mormon? I've always owned a cross, but I didn't start wearing it until I got saved. Yeah. And it does take on a different perspective. People say, oh, we don't, we don't believe in the cross. And I say, well, because it's a symbol of Christ's death. And right. I said, no, it isn't. It's a symbol of Christ's triumph over death. It's a That's symbol right. of it's an empty cross, our lives, right? yeah. <laughs> Especially the empty cross. You know, yeah. it's, it's um, all that we have. 
is yeah. from the cross. Yeah. So would you do anything different? Have you had, uh, I mean, yeah, I guess the question, would you do anything different over your years? Um, I didn't leave the church. I wanted to for years, and I didn't because I wanted to move out of Provo first. I didn't yeah. want to have to deal with my neighbors. And I wish that I'd had the courage many, many years ago to leave because I I just knew that it wasn't what I wanted. It, it wasn't mine. Mm. You know, it just never did really have a testimony of the church. I always believed in God, always believed in Christ. But I just wish that I'd had the courage to leave a lot sooner because I think I would have had some opportunities to serve yeah. in a different way. Yeah. Have your friends that were LDS, have they I've got one very close friend that she hasn't left, but she doesn't have a testimony at all. And most of my friends, their attitude is, I love you, I support you, but I don't want to talk about it. Uh, they're, they're active, my yeah. brothers, and yeah, yeah. they don't want to talk about have when the things come along in the press that has come out recently in in the newspapers and so on, do you do, are they willing to talk about those things or you know like the um, Sear Stone or the Joseph some, Smith having the polygamy? Yeah, some of them do. Most of them wives. are trying to get me. I've only got one friend who's who was interested in why I left. Most of them just say, "Don't want to know." And don't, let's not talk about it. Yeah, yeah. and. Um, What was the question? <laughs> well, I, I guess just your friends, if they've accepted what you, or if you're able to share any of the new. Well, I do share with them constantly, out. whether they like it or not. Oh. You know, I'm just constantly <laughs> dropping little things in there, and yeah. and with my grandchildren. And what do you think the Mormons most misunderstand about us Christians? Well, grace, of course, but yeah, um, I think we're just taught to be. To work, 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 you know, and and I got to the point where I I knew I couldn't do any more. I knew I couldn't work yeah. to improve my life, and I just had to cast it all on Christ. And I think that's what's so hard for people because we're raised in a culture that teaches us to be responsible and you know yeah. do everything we're supposed to do. And people have a hard time with this giving it all to God. Yeah, it is awkward sometimes. And, and I wondered about your going to a Christian church the first time. Did you have a, I, I was kind of awkward going into a Christian church the first time I went Well, the I first time in. I went to a Christian church was a um, tent meeting in Provo in a parking lot when I was about 13. Really? And I just thought it was kind of strange because they were so noisy, <laughs> but the friend that I went with really liked it, so I thought there must be something good about mm -hmm. it. And I've always loved going to other churches. I love going to the Catholic Church and the beautiful music and the gorgeous buildings. You know, I'm really into that a lot. And when I started going to Christian churches in the Provo area, I didn't like the rock music that they play, you know, the yeah, pop Some music. of them play the louder music. I was classically trained and always have sung and, you know, played. I majored in music when I first started and I um, I love the hymns. I love the old classics and the, you know, things yeah. like the Messiah and all those things. I just love them. Yeah, I do too. So, so you were able to, but you found a church that provides you with some, some of that kind of music? Uh, and, kind of, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not a church that I want to stay with permanently, but yeah. I do well, enjoy that's it. That's a nice freedom we have too, of being able to go where, where where we feel comfortable, where we're right. not locked into a geographical area. Yeah, or, and you don't something. have to go. To... I have lived in my house for 35 years, and I've been in six different wards. Oh, yeah. two different stakes. Yeah, they do that a lot, don't they? It's just Split. crazy. It's just split and divide and And I just think, why can't we just choose the building we want to go to, choose the time we want to go, <laughs> and go? Yeah, that's. But they been, have to. They I've have to know where that. we are, yeah, what we're doing. I guess so. So, have you? Uh, you say you're still good friends with your bishop. With this yeah, bishop that you love him dearly. He works but, for the MTC. No, oh, does One he? of the directors there. So. Yeah, but has uh, you haven't been able to really talk to him? I guess other than. Not really. No, yeah. his wife is a good friend too, and you know they 
they treat me well. They come to see me. They, you know, bring mm -hmm. me things on Mother's Day and things. But um, yeah, if you've been there 35 years, yeah, we don't. We just don't. Yeah. Discuss. Well, I don't you know, think my, I think it's awkward for them because they don't really understand what's happened to us and yeah. what we've learned. And uh, it's disappointing, isn't it, though, that people won't listen yeah, to what it you Yeah, it is, and especially when have. somebody that calls you themselves your friend, and yeah. then you, something has happened that's wonderful in your life, and they say, I don't want to hear about it. Yeah. That's yeah. a friend. Well, and trying to share the Bible and, and what Jesus really means. And, uh -huh. yeah. I, I think they I think they get that. I think they know that Christ has always been important, important yeah. to me. Yeah. That, and that and you're sincere about what you're about. In fact, beliefs. my bishop's wife, when she came to visit me once, my Bible was laying open on the table, and she said, you read the Bible more than any person I know. And I thought... What a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> no, it just happens to be there right now, but I love the Scriptures. I love the Old Testament. Well, I always thought it was, I mean, I guess I just always spent my time in the Book of Mormon, Doctrine and Covenants, and Pearl of Great Price, and all the other LDS books. Yeah. I seldom read, although I, I did read them, but I didn't really study the Bible. And now it, I realize what a volume yeah, it's it really a is. Yeah, it's treasure. God's Word to us. And it was here first, too, and that's mm -hmm. what certainly makes it important. And anything that came along after should have been judged up against uh, what the Bible teaches. Yeah, I just, I feel um, really sorry for people who don't have a real appreciation of the Bible because it's so much of our culture yeah. is based on it. Yeah. Well, Francis, we're just about out of time. I, do you have anything you'd like to say to family or friends out there? And Come to Jesus. <laughs> it's that throw, simple, isn't Throw it? your cares on Him and... Yeah. Uh, let him, let him guide your life. Yeah. Well, and it says in the Bible that uh, if we believe in him, then we'll have eternal life. Right. He that believeth in me hath eternal life, and that's the I'll joy that we have in Christ. And, and all these other works we do, the temple and baptisms for the dead and all that stuff is, is just not... It's not going to save us anymore. No. Yeah. Do I have time to s give you my favorite scripture? Uh, actually, no. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. We've only got 15 Galatians seconds. Galatians two twenty. Everybody, go read it. Okay. What does it say? I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good night.